What if I told you you could do the math wrong, but still get the math right? Here's what I'm talking about. When we crochet circles, we want them to lie flat, and that means we must follow the rules of math. In a previous video, I explained some of those rules and how to get your circles to always lie flat. But in case you haven't seen the other video, the big takeaways from that video were two things. First, there is a mathematically correct number of stitches to use. And the math showed us that for single crochet, we want to use multiples of six, half double crochet, we use multiples of nine, and double crochet, we use multiples of 12. The other takeaway was how to troubleshoot if your circles weren't lying flat. Let's say they were ruffling, or maybe they were making a dome. The takeaway there is that if your project is ruffling, you need to try a smaller hook size, and if your circle is forming a dome, you need to use a bigger hook size. However, what if you want to use the wrong number of stitches? Can it be done, and if so, how? That is what I'm going to cover in today's video. Really quick before we get into it, if you are new here, my name is Amanda, you are watching my channel Crafters Autonomous, and I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to let me know by leaving a like. It really helps my channel out and I greatly appreciate it. All right, let's get into the math. I'm going to start this off with the simplest stitch, which is the single crochet. In my previous video, we talked about how a single crochet is roughly a square shape, meaning the height of the stitch is roughly the same as the width of the stitch. As you might remember from your geometry classes, the circumference or the distance around a circle is equal to two times pi times the radius, with the radius being the measurement from the center of the circle to any point on the outer edge. For simplicity's sake, we're going to round pi to 3, so instead of 2 times pi times the radius, we can say 2 times 3 times the radius, which is 6 times the radius. And since we concluded that the circumference is about 6 times the radius, that told us we needed 6 single crochet stitches to crochet a circle that is flat. So 6 single crochet would be the mathematically correct number of stitches to use to crochet a flat circle. Let's talk about, though, if you want to use the wrong number of stitches. For instance, let's say you want to start your circle off with eight single crochet stitches. How can we go about this? Will it mess up our circle? Let's talk about it. First of all, if we're making a circle and not a 3D shape, we want it to be flat. And in order for our circle to actually end up flat, we must follow the mathematical ratio between the radius and the circumference. Again, that ratio is the circumference equals 2 times pi times r, and for simplicity's sake, we're going to do some rounding and say that the circumference equals 6 times the radius. If it normally takes six stitches to follow this ratio and get a circumference that lies flat, if we throw in two more stitches, we're going to be too long for our circle. So the only way we can fit eight stitches, which is more than six, is if we make every stitch narrower. How do we make them narrower, you ask? Easy. We use a smaller hook size. Here's another way to think of it. If we have a circle and we cut it into six pie slices, each of those pie slices would represent a single crochet stitch. However, if instead of cutting our circle into six pie slices, we cut it into eight pie slices, each of those slices is going to be a little bit narrower. Making every stitch a little narrower is the only way we can fit in extra stitches and still get a flat circle. And fortunately, making our stitches narrower is as simple as using a smaller hook size. You might be wondering, when would this apply? How is this helpful? One example is with amigurumi. When we work amigurumi, we want our stitches to be really tight and tiny so we don't have holes. Often that means using a smaller hook size than is recommended to make even tighter stitches. If you only work six stitches, those stitches might be too narrow to create a flat circle. So to get enough stitches to make a flat circle and go all the way around, we might need to use seven stitches or eight stitches. Because again, using that smaller hook takes all of our stitches and makes them narrower. And if they're all a little bit narrower, it's going to take more of them to make the pizza slices to go all the way around our circle. So we see how things work if we have more stitches. What about if we have less stitches? I'm going to use an example of double crochet because this is something that I actually see pretty commonly. From my previous video, we talked about how the mathematically correct way to do double crochet is to use multiples of 12 stitches. Well, that's the easiest way to troubleshoot. What 
what if we want to use only 10 stitches and still get a flat circle? If we think about a pizza and it's cut into slices where each slice is a double crochet stitch. If we normally cut our pizza into 12 slices going all the way around, but now we decide to only cut it into 10 slices, we need to make each of those stitches wider. Otherwise, if we go from 12 slices and get rid of two slices, we're not gonna have an entire pizza, meaning we're not gonna get a full circle to lay flat. So in doing less stitches, we need our stitches to get a little wider. And how do we make our stitches wider? You guessed it, we go to a bigger hook size. The bigger hook size will make each of those 10 stitches just a little bit wider than normal. And that will give our stitches just a little more width so that way we can get all the way around with just 10 stitches. Now, when might this apply and when might this be helpful? This is something I see in a lot of patterns when we're making things that we want to be a little, I say fluffier and softer or another way to think about it would be a little bit looser of a project. So maybe you're making a hat and you don't want the hat to be really dense, you want it to be soft and fluffy and kind of loose, you might want to use a bigger hook and do fewer stitches. Or maybe you have a little Amy Gurumi snowman and you want to make round little button appliques to sew on there. If you're tired of working with a really little hook and tight stitches for working on your Amy Gurumi project, you might want to take a break and opt for a bigger hook size so it's faster. The bigger hook size will make your stitches wider and if it makes them wide enough you can get by with fewer stitches instead of needing to work 12. It can also be nice to work fewer stitches, in this case say only 10 double crochet, because fewer stitches means it goes a lot faster. Now that you know you can create flat circles even using the wrong numbers, you might be thinking, how do we do the increases? That is a great question I'm going to answer next. Let's take a look at what the math tells us. I'm going to explain this with some examples. We're going to start off with a single crochet circle where we're working eight stitches. So because we're working eight stitches, that means we're using a little bit smaller of a hook than normal to make our stitches narrower so that way all eight stitches can fit in our circle and make it lie flat. Again, we have a special ratio between the radius and the circumference that will guarantee we get a flat circle. And we are going to use the formula the circumference equals six times the radius. In this case, we don't really care what the actual measurement of the radius is and we also don't need to worry about the ratio between the width and the height like we talked about in the previous video. That's because we're using the wrong number of stitches. So in this situation that means our round one circumference is six times the radius of round one. Now for round two our radius is going to be two times as big as the radius from round one. That's because round one the radius is the height of one stitch however when we work two rounds the radius will be the height of two stitches. So the radius in round two is double the radius in round one. Now again, we go back to our formula and plug our numbers in to make sure that we get a flat circle. So the circumference for round two is going to be six times the radius of round two. However, what did we just say? We realized that the radius of round two is two times the radius of round one. So another way that we can say the circumference of round two equals six times the radius of round two is we can say the circumference of round two equals six times two times the radius of round one. If we use the commutative property of multiplication, we can move our numbers around and say that the circumference of round two equals two times six times the radius of round one. Well, we know that the circumference of round one equals six times the radius of round one. So what we can conclude then is that the circumference of round two is two times the circumference of round one. Okay, that's a lot of math to get to our takeaway. The takeaway is that the circumference of round two is double the circumference of round one. What does that actually mean for crocheting? When we crochet a circle, we can think of our circumference as the number of stitches we work around. So if round two has a circumference that's twice round one, that means the number of stitches we work in round two needs to be twice as many stitches as round one. Same idea applies with round three. We're gonna compare round three to round one. So the circumference of round three is going to equal six times the radius of round three. Now we don't know the actual measurement of our radius, but when we work three rounds, the radius is gonna be the height of three stitches, whereas the radius of round one is the height of just one stitch. So the radius of round three is going to be three times the radius of round one. Again, we're gonna plug our numbers in and walk through the the math. So the circumference of round three equals six times the radius of round three. Well, if the radius of round three is three times the radius of round one, we can say that the circumference of round three is six 
times three times the radius of round one. Again, we're gonna do a little bit of maneuvering with our numbers. That's gonna tell us that the circumference of round three is three times six times the radius of round one. And since six times the radius of round one is the circumference of round one, that tells us that the circumference of round three is going to be three times the circumference of round one. That's the big math takeaway. Here's what that tells us in crochet terms. However many stitches we worked in round one, we need to work three times that many stitches in round three. Same idea for round four. The circumference will be four times as big as the circumference from round one, so we need to work four times as many stitches in round four as we did in round one. So in our example, we started with eight stitches, so every round we are going to add eight more stitches. So the first round will have eight single crochet, second round will have 16, then 24, then 32, and so on. So we double the stitches from round one, triple the stitches from round one, quadruple the stitches from round one, and so forth. So the takeaway formula here is that whatever round you are on to know how many stitches to work, take the round number that you're on and multiply it by the number of stitches from round one to get how many stitches you need to work for the current round. Now, I won't go into it in quite as mathematically technical terms as I did for the single crochet example, but the same thing applies with our double crochet scenario where we are using fewer stitches, and really it applies with any stitch where we're using fewer than the correct number of stitches. So let's go back to our double crochet example where we are working with 10 double crochet stitches in our round. The radius of round two is going to be twice as big as the radius of round one. And when we run through our math, that's going to tell us that the circumference of round two is going to be two times the circumference of round one. So therefore, we need to work two times as many stitches in round two as we did in round one. So if round one was 10 stitches, round two will be 20. Moving on to round three, our radius will be three times the height of the radius from round one. That means the circumference of round three is going to be three times the circumference of round one, which what that tells us in crochet terminology is round three will have three times as many stitches as round one. So in our specific example, since round one has 10 stitches, round three would have 30 stitches. And in this scenario, you would just keep adding 10 stitches every round. So if we were on round 42, that means for round 42, the number of stitches we work needs to be 42 times the number of stitches in round one. So here is the big takeaway concerning how to do your increases. Regardless of whether you're working more or fewer than the correct number of stitches for your round, you want to increase by the same amount every round. The amount you increase by is the number of stitches that you used in round one. So this is great and all. We now understand that yes, it's possible to make a flat circle using the wrong number of stitches. And now we also understand how to do our increasing. However, we still have the scenario where it's only gonna work out and lie flat if we have the correct hook and yarn combo. So let's talk about how to troubleshoot to make sure you end up with the correct yarn and hook combo to get your circle to lie flat. Unfortunately, it's not as easy to troubleshoot using the wrong numbers as it is when we have the correct number of stitches. Fortunately, the same principles apply. If your circle is ruffling, that means your hook is too big, you need to go to a smaller hook size. If instead of lying flat, your circle is forming a dome shape, then you need to use a larger hook size. Here's the tricky thing. It can take several rounds of working to see if your project is going to ruffle, create a dome, or lie flat. When we use the correct number, we can easily make a test swatch, which I explained in the previous video, to get the correct hook size. However, there's not really a good way to make a test swatch when we're working with the wrong number of stitches. What I would recommend is if you're having a hard time getting your circles to lie flat when using the wrong number of stitches, is I would work at least three to five rounds with your hook and yarn combo to really see what it's going to do. And then at that point, if it ruffles, go to a smaller hook size. If it forms a dome, go to a bigger hook size. However, this can require a little bit more trial and error, working on it, realizing, nope, this is not a good hook and yarn combo, and unraveling projects until you get the right hook and yarn combo to get a nice flat circle. Now, I know that might have been a lot to take in for some of y'all. That is okay. I am proud of you for sticking through watching a math video. It makes my nerdy little math heart so happy. And hopefully by popping up on screen with the big takeaways and ideas, you're at least able to apply what the math tells us 
even if the math is still a little confusing. Again, thank you so much for watching. I would love if you subscribe to my channel if you are new here. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and comment in the description below what your thoughts are on the math I explained. If you love math, if you hate math, if you found other troubleshooting techniques to get your circles flat, I wanna hear from y'all. I love chatting with y'all. I hope you all have a lovely day and until my next video, happy crafting.